Hi. Many are familiar with the Shonen Jump Big Three, but I'd like to talk about another Big Three in the realm of television and film, but mainly TV. The three that have been dominating in the animated content niche for a while, more than a decade. Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, and Disney. And this is part one of a series of video essays talking about the big three animation channels. Let's begin. Back in my days of growing up, if you wanted to watch a good animated show on the tele, you had few choices. There wasn't any streaming services, not yet at least. And outside Saturday mornings, you're left searching through MTV to watch Daria or maybe Clone High or Beavis and Butthead or Comedy Central for South Park and Futurama or CBS or TBS or those rare occasions like Spike or G4 or some other niche channel like IFC. But the top contenders were always the big three. Cartoon Network, Disney, and Nickelodeon. I grew up decently broke, but still had excellent TV service, where each of these channels had their own channels. Disney was the biggest of the three, and is by far the most popular worldwide. There was Disney 1 and Disney 2, Disney DXD, which was also Jet X or Toon Disney, and the kids channel that Disney took over, turning it into Disney Junior. That was in like 2011. Disney itself, as we all know, is old as fuck, starting out in 1923, almost 100 years, and releasing their first of many classics, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, in 1937. But it wouldn't be until April 18, 1983, that they started taking over the airwaves of the television, launching the Disney Channel, with Mickey leading the helm with Good Morning Mickey, a collection of short animated adventures of the whole anthropomorphic crew. It gradually grew bigger and bigger, creating more shows and elaborate ads and toys. And in 1998, they created Toon Disney, a separate channel strictly to house and endorse their animated content. And then like a teenager with caring but absentee parents, it went through some stages. During my time as a lad, the channel evolved into incorporating live action shows and experimenting with an array of shows for specific audiences. You had your live action family comedies, your extraordinary live action family comedies, weird animated slapstick comedies, villain of the week adventures, and oh shit wait, there's a compelling story somewhere in here with a mystery. And who can forget the golden gems that were the Disney Channel movies, like Even Stevens. And back in the earlier days before the live action remakes, Disney was on the wave of, you like this movie? Well, you're gonna love this show. I didn't have to mention the popularity that is the Disney music. So I'm gonna list my favorite things I saw on the Disney Channel. But as much of a household name as Disney is, and grew to be, it's not the first of the big three to exist on TV. That honor goes to Nickelodeon, which premiered December 1st, 1977 with Pinwheel, a long-running series of childhood educational entertainment full of puppets and live-action skits made by Dr. Vivian Horner, who also conceived the idea for the channel itself, having previously worked with PBS and stuff. At launch, Nickelodeon was commercial free, something mostly unheard of these days, and mainly featured educational shows highly inspired by the works and people behind PBS and Sesame Street. By 1984, the channel began running commercials, sadly, and introducing more entertainment-focused programming, making those good original cartoons. And Nick started on its path of block programming in 1985 when Nick at Night dropped 
for all those adults and kids that stay up too late and love the laugh track. And in January 1988, Nick Jr. launched as a morning block. And in 1991, the Nicktoons block launched, showing off their new aim at kids programming. And since then, the channels maintained a consistent mix of original live action and animated content. Nick first branched out channel-wise in 2002, launching Nicktoons as its own channel which for the longest time I thought was a channel everybody had. But that was not the truth. And then in 2009, Nick Jr. became a thing. To house all the shows that talk back to you and stare into the screen back at the viewer. Something YouTubers would shamelessly steal years later. And when I was a lad, Nickelodeon was the king of expositional theme songs where you get the entire plot of the show and a nice musical snippet, the opening theme. Literally all the Butch Hartman shows, Cat Dog, Avatar, even TMNT. Before you even get into the show, you know what it's about. Balancing the perfect act of exposition, lore dumping, with the greatest act of telling and showing. Let me explain. What is exposition? Narrative exposition is the insertion of the background information within a story or narrative. This information is about the settings, characters, backstories, like the plot synopsis and summary and whatnot. And these theme songs serve that purpose perfectly. Let's look at the Butch Hartman shows. Timmy is an average kid who no one can understand. We understand that Vicky is the antagonist, and we understand why he got the fairies and the capabilities of the show. Moving on, Danny Phantom. He was just 14 when his parents built a very strange machine. He stepped inside of it, got ghost powers. Now he's here to save the world. You and me, tough puppy. He was a plain old mutt, but then he started working for tough doing secret agent stuff. And now he's a tough puppy. Shit, even cat dog, as short and catchy as it is, lets you know about the whole origins of cat dog and shows you all the characters and dynamics in play. Sometimes the opening sequence would be an unbelievably great banger, like TMNT. And sometimes someone in an announcer voice would tell you everything you need to know about the show in the first place. Making the opening sequence itself exposition. Miracle City, a spicy cesspool of crime and villainy. This is the story of Manny Rivera, better known as... Sometimes the narrator would just tell you everything you needed to know about the show. Mr. X, leader and father. Mrs. X, combat specialist and mother. Tuesday X, team investigator and daughter. Truman X, technology expert and son. Together they form the world's first ultra-secret spy family. Sometimes it would be the main character. This is me, Eliza Thornberry, part of your average family. I got a dad. Mashing. In a middle school full of bullies. Ah! Insane <laughs> teachers. Ah! And throw school lunches. Ned Bigby, that's me. Water. Earth. Fire. Air. Which is why I say it is the king of narrative exposition. In theme song or opening sequence form, Nick had a unique range of shows from character driven adventures with a magical flair to nonsensical episodic shenanigans and adventures of lovable characters and hateable characters to extraordinary teens in extraordinary situations or not so extraordinary situations. Nowadays they've let go of many promising things and seem to struggle finding success on new content and letting go of the old. But there does seem to be a massive resurgence for nostalgia because of all the old things that are coming back and becoming new. Which brings me to the newest kid on the block, 
Cartoon Network, which officially launched October 1st, 1992. CN all started with these three men and these two companies, Hanna-Barbera, started by William Hanna and Joseph Barbera. They used to work for an animation studio and then left to make their own studio and then blew up during the 1940s through 80s with some productions you may know and then are still kept alive today such as Scooby-Doo, Tom and Jerry, and many more. Meanwhile, this man Ted Turner was being over here business tycoon and buying up all the broadcasting rights, television network studios, even a student-owned tech-based radio station at MIT, starting up Turner Broadcasting and TBS and making CNN and TNT a thing. And in 1991, he sought his sights on Hanna-Barbera, having already owned the broadcasting rights and television networks necessary to be on air, and acquiring the rights to the Looney Tunes and Popeyes. The acquisition launched the birth of Cartoon Network that which came the very next year and THE Cartoon Network launched as the first 24 hour single genre cable channel with animation as its main theme showing all the reruns of the properties they owned like how Boomerang did while I was a lad Cartoon Network Studios opened up in 1994 to birth new life into the ever-growing channel Cartoon Network became a place for for creative experimentation like no other of the big three, focusing on only having animated content at first running day and night, and mostly sticking to that. Starting out with What a Cartoon, a clever way to test pilots for potential future content, disguised as simple animated shorts, and then a puppet show, because all the big three started out as young child entertainment and needed a puppet show. And in the year of Space Jam, Time Warner and Turner did a merger, and CN got the green light to make more things, taking the throne for the greatest place for episodic adventures and comedies, with most shows running a full episode in only 15 minutes, including commercials. Cartoon Network then went to the art of mastering the programming block, taking notes from Nick at Night and making Adult Swim in 2001. And seeing the love everyone has for Saturday morning cartoons and building upon that, they made Toonami, making Saturday Night now also great. It became a reliable source for entertainment and variety. Your lives are once again complete. They also mastered the art of not having any laugh track in their shows by being better written and not belittling the intelligence of their audience by over explaining everything. And they also didn't have the whole loud equals funny or oh no so random happenstance. At least not in the same level that the other two had. Though looking back on it now, Ed and Eddie has a lot more screaming in it than I remember. But Nick being king of the expositional theme song, Cartoon Network is the overall king of fantastical youngin adventures, and by far my favorite. As a kid I would have rated these shows like this, with Disney being my least favorite. Though I loved them all, I liked the adventures that were a long haul and took you to places, but most importantly were unpredictable, something most Disney shows rarely were. But nowadays, I'd rank them like this, with Nick being on the bottom. Even though Disney has an unoriginality problem and is lacking in quality the more it expands in certain aspects, you could say the same for Nick, and Paramount's recesses are nowhere near to the level of the Big Mouse House. But all in all, Cartoon Network is still on top, and even though the animation industry is like eating itself alive, their shows are still goaded. But that's pretty much all for this one now, folks. Next one in this series, I'll go in depth comparing and contrasting the shows and programming over the errors of the big three. So subscribe and stay tuned. How would you rank the big three? And what were your favorite shows from them? Akuna Batata.